Hi world, it's about four o'clock in the afternoon, it's Tuesday, it's something like the 8th of March 2016. As you can hear, I've got an absolutely stinking head cold, but it's a lot better today than it has been in the last two or three days, which is great because I'm on a plane tomorrow and I'm heading for the wonderful island and the wonderful people of Bermuda where I've got lots and lots and lots of readings and workshops and lectures to do over the coming weeks. So watch out Bermuda, I'm on my way and I'm well past contagious. But I must admit in the last few days I've been suffering a bit. I've had, to, I've forced myself to partake in a bit of mead to stop my cough. And I'm doing this video, even though I don't feel like my best, but I'm doing this video because you can't not do a video at the moment. Tonight, or at least at about 2 a.m. or five minutes to two in the morning, UK time, there is a total eclipse of the sun. And when you look at this in conjunction with what else is going on, Mercury has just moved into Aquarius over the last few days. Mars is now at zero stroke one degree of Sagittarius, getting ready to start its retrograde dance, which is showing up in so many people's charts over the next six months. Oh, a good 20% of people are getting hit by that Mercury, by that Mars retrograde. Add to this the eclipse of the sun tonight. Now, I've seen a lot of astrology sites online that are going, oh, it's all right, it's an easy eclipse. No, it's bloody not. I've been watching the news for the last couple of days and I'm surprised at how low-key the news is. But then eclipses never work on the exact day. I hope, because I'm flying, I'm, I'm in an aeroplane on a few hours after the eclipse finishes. But the eclipse does last a time. Some astrologers will say it lasts six months each side of the actual eclipse. I think it's more like a couple of weeks, maybe one month, maybe two weeks before, two to three weeks afterwards. But it's a hell of an eclipse. The sun is totally eclipsed. It starts over about 500 miles west of Singapore, goes over the Moluccan Islands, the southern Philippines, um, and then out into the Pacific, north of Hawaii, and ends up over southern Alaska. And places as far south as Central Australia and as far north as southern Japan, southern China, northern Laos and Cambodia will get 50% eclipses. So I do expect developments in the Ring of Fire at a volcano and earthquake level over the coming couple of weeks. But um, it's the aspects to this eclipse. Why other astrologers are saying it's a, it's a really nice eclipse? I've got no idea. They're obviously on a different planet to me. The eclipse of the sun is opposite Jupiter, retrograde in Virgo. I don't really like Jupiter in Virgo. It's too demanding, it's too analytical, it's too over fussy, too clinical. And retrograde particularly, opposite the sun, is creating certain situations that are way over the top, larger than life, overstated, overweight, overspending, overindulgence, over everything. Add to this that the sun-moon conjunction, because that's what an eclipse is, of course, not only in longitude, but also in latitude, but it's opposite Jupiter. The whole shebang, sun, moon and Jupiter, are all strongly T-square to Saturn. This is happening now, as I record, and it's getting stronger and stronger over the next 24 hours, and then it will begin to dissipate. But sun, moon, square, Saturn, that's, that's a difficult aspect. At least it's Saturn and not one of the outer planets, because the outer planets govern the more unconscious and subconscious, and they deal with issues that are kind of outside of human control. At least if it's Saturn, you know that through disciplined, focus, structured, hard work and self-discipline, you can actually push through. Um, but with Jupiter square, Saturn as well, these are the two planets that kind of rule money and economics. And with the sun, moon opposite Jupiter and square Saturn, it does suggest that global markets are going to be going all over the place in the coming couple of weeks. I noticed that the oil price is now up to about $40 a barrel. Just in this last week, it's jumped 30%. Gold has gone up in this last month from about 1050 to nearly 1300 The markets are volatile and... Um, this eclipse does particularly affect the UK with the coming referendum on whether to stay in Europe or not. And I will discuss that another time because I've done the horoscope for the moment of the closure of the polls. And boy, is that an interesting chart. But that can wait till another time. 
it does suggest that this eclipse is likely to bring a degree of economic turmoil in the coming weeks that is going to catch a lot of people on the hop. I suspect the repercussions of this won't really be felt properly until September, October of this year when we've got another couple of eclipses also in Pisces and Virgo. Um, and that is going to set the cat amongst the pigeons when it comes to things like share prices, house prices, commodity prices, stock markets and things like that. If you're one of those people who's got a birthday around the, I don't know, the, the 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th of the mutable signs of, of Gemini, Virgo, Pisces, Sag, what's that, December, June, uh, September and March, then this is a shaky time. This is a time where there's a lot of circumstances outside of your control that are seemingly holding you back. And it would be very easy to let things either go really undermined, undercut or over the top and larger than life. Keeping things in a balanced perspective is perhaps the hardest challenge of all at the moment. But at the end of the day, the moon is passing in front of the sun and it's going to completely obscure the sun. The fact that the sun is 360 fur times further away from the earth than the moon and that the moon is 360 times smaller in diameter than the sun is no doubt pure coincidence. Hmm. But, <coughs> but um, if it weren't for that coincidence, we wouldn't get total eclipses. So we've got a total eclipse tonight. It's going to be a bit manic out there today. So count to ten, folks. Don't let your buttons get pushed. You know, if you're feeling a little bit like taking chances, don't. If you're feeling like um, you want to take some type of specific action that in other times you would consider rash, don't do it. Wait, wait. We're in the middle of eclipse season. It's not a good time to be pushing your luck. The light of the sun is going to be hidden from the earth. The birds will land. The animals will cluster together. Um, there's a lot of old ritual and a lot of old folklore associated with total eclipses of the sun, particularly around the stone circles and the movement of large lumps of stone. It does seem that um, any large lump of stone that's got a heavy quartz crystal content does seem to go through quite a big change uh, during an eclipse. So uh, places that are built on heavy duty granite, for example, Southern Cornwall in England, Manhattan in New York, yeah, heavy quartz content, the eclipse is going to affect them. Tokyo also, I expect, possibly Hong Kong. We shall see. But in the meantime, it's an eclipse tonight. Don't go out drinking tonight. Don't go taking chances. Don't run across the road in front of a bus just because you think you just might make it. You won't. Be careful. Just for the next few hours. Right, I'm off to Bermuda. I might post a video early in the morning. I hope so. Um, if not, well, catch you from Bermuda, folks. All right, take care. Good luck tonight. Bye.